This is the story of my eight-week cruise in the Baltic Sea in my microcruiser, Cox, the prototype Krill, built in 1998. She's under four metres long and built of timber. The plan was to cruise amongst the 25,000 named islands which are opposite Stockholm itself and way down south and further up. Cox only weighing 400 kilos is very easily trailed behind the van and I took four days driving up from the southwest of France um, not using the motorways all the way through Belgium, Germany, Denmark, southern Sweden and then across to the, the east coast of Sweden to a town called Nyköping which was my planned starting point. The journey went wonderfully well for 2,500 kilometres until the last 100 kilometres and I stopped in fact just to buy a SIM card for my telephone in Nürshöping which was um, a bigger town and as I pulled off the motorway I looked behind and saw that I was losing one of the wheels of the trailer holding the boat and um, I managed to get off the road and stopped and when I jacked up the trailer the whole wheel came off my hand. The bearings and the centre part of the hub had actually just broken although I'd stopped every two hours to check for wobble and heat and so on and no problem until right at the very end um, so very lucky to um, have stopped in time and I did find someone who had bearings and within 12 hours I was back on the road again. Um, nasty, nasty start there. New Sherping's a wonderful place to start the cruise from. Uh, start it's an old capital of Sweden. Um, very charming architecture lovely people as always and any shops are needed for storing up the boat and there's a very good hard where a slip where I could put the boat in only good for small boats but it was perfect for cocks and what was also very good there was a big hanger which they use for in wintering the boats and of course it was empty in the summer so I was able to leave the trailer and the van inside throughout the whole period of my stay and a very very reasonable charge so that was terrific thank you and then the cruise started uh, going out to the islands and what is fantastic really is that there's no tide and there's no current so the variation on the water height is literally a few centimeters uh, due to barometric pressure or prevailing wind. Uh, so every night I anchored up uh, from the bows onto the rocks um, with normally two lines out and the kedge out from the stern and um, most nights that's exactly what I did and so I could go ashore and walk and um, like here I was making bread and um, just exploring a wonderful wonderful way and a great change from slogging throughout day and night day and out on my normal cruises so a terrific change
navigation had to be absolutely spot on because there were literally thousands of little rocks and uh, just below waterline um, and very solid granite, not just sandbanks that one might be used to. Um, so I used um, local charts which were excellent. There was a, a booklet of 16 A3 charts which covered a large part of the area. Um, although for the Stockholm archipelago there were three of these booklets and it actually turned out to be very expensive. Um, so I got a more of a planning one, uh, which is the Stockholm Shogod, which is the one that you saw just now. And um, also with the iPad with a waterproof cover, Navionics was fantastic. To be honest, it's so easy to use. And when I compared it with the paper charts, it was brilliant. Also, I met some people who gave me some huge paper charts, um, some of which were about as big as my storm jib, um, which are very hard to use in a four meter boat. Um, but it just confirmed um, Navionics and the other charts I had. So very interesting navigation all the time, um, made much more easy without tides or currents. Um, so yeah, good, relatively easy navigating, but you had to be on the ball the whole time, absolutely. Then the next day I had to tack up the fjord to Val de Marchebec and um, had a small technical problem and actually was delighted to have had the excuse to go there. Uh, a delightful village, very typical and the other thing I needed to do was buy a better sleeping bag. which I bought in this army surplus store, which was quite wonderful. And well, the Marshvik's a haven of wooden boats, and there were 12 wooden folk boats there. And this chap has been working this boat all his life, delivering potatoes and timber up and down the coast when it's not iced over. Um, so a lovely excuse to stop now.
Occasionally I came across these wonderful groups of boats which are all family friends and masses of children having wonderful times and they always had their picnics ashore. Uh, and sometimes I joined in and enjoyed the fun with them, but most of the time I was on my own. And actually it sort of made me feel even lonely, sort of seeing them all doing their bit and me doing mine rather differently. Then I had a long hard sail up to Trosa, which is a small town, a uh, little port, where I was able to watch France play in the World Cup finals of football, which uh, luckily we won and um, I celebrated actually with a small family of French people, so it was, it was a great, great occasion.
I then anchored up in this wonderful little creek on an island called Nemde, which is northeast of Delare, and met a most fantastic couple who were called Inga and Jan, and they do line fishing uh, for three months of the year out in the islands, and they couldn't have made me more welcome had they tried. Um, it was just most probably the best experience of the whole trip and I think we've become friends and I'll certainly see them again and they'll probably come to see us in France. Um, and it's just one of these moments of total empathy which doesn't always happen but they're really really dim. Then we sailed out to the most easterly part of the whole trip to a group of islands called Gilurga, which are uh, just thousands of minute islands, very rocky of course, maximum height probably only eight meters above sea level, lots of rocks just below the, the surface of the sea. So a pretty treacherous place actually. Uh, it was very windy and I was on the north side to protect myself from a southwesterly, um, but really the holding wasn't wonderful. What was amazing, in fact, was the number of fishing huts on the most sheltered part of the island. Um, very active, obviously, at the right time of year. No one here at this stage getting towards the end of August, um, but, but but they're very active. I, th I could see the, the evidence of recent use. And the winter, it's all frozen up. It was a magic place, um, probably the climax of the trip. And it was the point, really, where I turned around and, and went back towards New Sherping.
The last days were spent sailing back down to New Sherping, uh, where we took cocks out of the water and then had an uneventful journey back down to France, 2,500 kilometers further down the road.